Hey there, welcome back to another English shadowing practice. Today, we're diving into something super practical, booking a hotel room. We all know choosing the right hotel can be tricky. I've got Ben with me today, and we're going to talk through how he handles this process. Ben's always on the road for work, so he's picked up a few tricks along the way. Hopefully, by the end of this, you'll have a clearer idea of how to make your booking easier. Don't forget to drop your own tips or experiences in the comments below. We'd love to hear how you book your stays. So, Ben, when it comes to booking a hotel room, what's your first move? Do you go for the budget or start by picking a destination? Oh, that's the big question, right? I guess it depends. If it's for a work trip, the destination is already set, so I start with the budget. But if it's a personal trip, I like to get a feel for the place first, you know? Sometimes a great destination can inspire the whole trip, and then I'll work my budget around that. Makes sense. And once you've got the destination or budget down, how do you start the hotel search? Do you have a go to method? Oh, yeah, I definitely do. I usually start with travel websites or apps like Booking.com or Expedia. They're super handy because they let you filter based on price, reviews, location, and amenities all in one go. But I also check specific hotel websites directly, just in case they have some exclusive deal or perks. Sometimes, those third party sites won't show you everything. Ah, right. Those travel sites are super convenient. But with so many options, how do you choose? What's your priority, location, amenities, price, or maybe the reviews? Honestly, it's a mix of all that. I mean, location is usually the first thing I check. I don't want to book a cheap room and end up miles away from where I need to be. And then I look at the amenities, like does it have free Wi-Fi, breakfast, or a gym? Reviews definitely help too, but I don't obsess over them. I just try to get a general feel. You gotta be careful though, some reviews are a bit over the top. Haha, <laughs> yeah. You can't always trust those one-star rants, right? So, how do you filter through the reviews? Do you look for something specific? Oh, for sure. I mostly look for patterns. Like, if multiple people mention the same problem, like bad service or cleanliness issues, that's a red flag. But if it's just one person complaining about something random, I don't stress too much. I also keep an eye out for reviews that mention the things that matter to me, like if the Wi-Fi is solid or if the location is convenient. That's smart. What about hidden fees? Have you ever been caught off guard with those sneaky charges? Oh, uh, don't even get me started on that. I've been burned before with stuff like resort fees, parking charges, or even Wi-Fi fees. Now, I always double-check for those when I'm booking. You've got to read the fine print, man. It's annoying, but it'll save you from nasty surprises later on. Totally. Speaking of surprises, what's the benefit of booking directly with a hotel instead of through a third-party site? Is it really worth it? Sometimes, yeah. Booking directly with the hotel can actually get you some perks, like free upgrades, better cancellation policies, or even free breakfast. Plus, some hotels offer loyalty points if you book through them. But, to be honest, sometimes third-party sites have better deals, so I always compare both before making a decision. That's a good approach. Now, what about refundable versus non-refundable rooms? What's your take? 
Do you play it safe or go for the cheaper option? It depends on how certain I am about my plans. If it's a trip I'm 100% sure about, I'll grab the non-refundable deal because it saves money. But if there's any chance my plans might change, I stick with refundable bookings. That extra flexibility is worth the slightly higher price. Totally agree. And what about special requests? Like, if you want a higher floor or a specific view, how do you handle that? Do you just add a note while booking? Yeah, I always make my preferences clear when I book, but I don't just leave it at that. After booking, I usually call the hotel directly and politely ask if they can accommodate my request. Most places are pretty chill about it if you ask nicely. I've even scored a few upgrades just by doing that. Smooth move. I should try that next time. But hey, is it important to consider the cancellation policy when booking? Absolutely. With how unpredictable life can be, you've got to know what your options are if things fall through. I always look for flexible cancellation policies, especially for big trips. Even for smaller getaways, it's nice to have the peace of mind that I can change things without losing too much money. Yeah, for sure. So, when's the best time to book a hotel? Do you look for last-minute deals or do you book way in advance? It depends on the trip. For work, I book early to lock in a good rate. But for vacations, if I'm feeling adventurous, I'll keep an eye on last-minute deals. Sometimes, you can snag a really sweet deal if you're willing to take the gamble. But there's a balance, you don't want to wait too long and end up with no options. Haha, <laughs> right. It's like playing a game of chicken with the prices. So, looking back, do you think there's something people often overlook when booking a hotel? Yeah, I think people sometimes forget about the small details, like checking the room size or if the hotel is under construction. Oh, and make sure to read up on the cancellation policy. Some hotels are really strict about it. You don't want to end up losing your money just because plans changed last minute. Good point. Any advice you'd give to someone booking a hotel room for the first time? Definitely. First, don't just book the cheapest option. Look at the bigger picture, like location and reviews. Second, check for those hidden fees we talked about. And lastly, be sure to check if the hotel offers any free perks, like breakfast or parking. Those little things can make a big difference in your stay. That was a solid conversation, Ben. I think you covered everything someone needs to know before booking a hotel room. I've definitely picked up a few tips I'll use next time I'm planning a trip. Glad to hear it. Booking a hotel can feel like a bit of a maze, but once you know what to look for, it's a lot easier. And hey, it's always nice when your trip starts with a great place to stay. Absolutely. Thanks again, Ben. And to everyone watching, we hope you found this helpful. If you've got any tips or experiences about booking hotels, drop them in the comments. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more conversations like this one.